This is the most powerful handheld on the market right now, the GPD Win 5. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at official SteamOS running on this device. So we're finally able to do this with the SteamOS main branch 3.8. And I'll tell you, I mean, performance here is absolutely amazing on the GPD Win 5. If you're not familiar with this device, uh, what we've got here is the AMD Ryzen AI Max 385. They also make a 395 version, but I wanted the 385 because with this, we do have less CPU cores, but we've still got a very powerful iGPU, the Radeon 8050S. As you can see, we've got SteamOS Holo 3.8. And again, this is the main branch. It's still in a bit of testing phases, but I'll tell you with the new boot chain that they're using, it does work on Strix Halo, obviously with the GPD Win 5 here. It'll also work on Strix Point APUs. And I've got a bunch of different handhelds that I wanna test this on. So more videos are on the way, keep an eye out on the channel. But really what was kind of holding us back was uh, a boot hang in SteamOS on these APUs but it's now fixed with the 3.8 main branch. So I've just moved over to my game capture to make it a bit easier to see everything. And yeah, we've got official SteamOS installed on the GPD Win 5. And I'll show you real quick. We'll head down to our settings just to get this out of the way from system, SteamOS Holo, OS code name Holo, Steam Deck, and we're on 3.8. So this is actually a main branch that I'm using here. And if we go down just a bit more, We've got the AMD Ryzen AI Max 385. Remember, they do make a 395 version of this, but this is the one that I wanted because we have eight cores, 16 threads. I've got a 32 gig system here, so I've got 16 gigabytes dedicated to system RAM and 16 gigabytes dedicated to the iGPU, which just happens to be that Radeon 8050S. So far with this installed, it's actually working really well. The controller on the unit worked out of the box. I only had to map the, uh, what would be kind of the Xbox button as our menu button down below, but we can get into all of our settings here. Wi-Fi, even Bluetooth is working. So if I add a device, see, we've got a ton to pop up. So Bluetooth here is also working with this device. Now, when it comes to installing official SteamOS on other devices other than the Steam Deck and a few other handhelds out there, TDP control kind of becomes an issue for some people, at least from our performance menu over here, as you can see TDP is not listed, but I've got a way to totally control this and I can do up to even 120 watts. I use the Decky loader with simple Decky TDP. So at the top here, we've got our TDP and I've got this set a bit lower. So let me go down here and change my range. And uh, it's pretty crazy, but we can do down to four watts with this and all the way up to 120. And I'm not gonna be doing 120 on this, I'll be sitting anywhere between 20 up to 45 watts. Now base TDP on this out of the box from GPD and Windows is gonna be like 45 watts. That's kind of their performance mode gaming. You can do up to 65 on battery power, but here in SteamOS at 1080p, most games won't require up to 45 watts. We've also got our GPU mode that we can change. We can disable CPU boost, SMT, and uh, yeah, this is a really nice little application here. But other than that, from our performance, we can enable HDR on an external display, allow tearing, half rate shading, basically anything we want to do here like we would on the Steam Deck, we can do it from here except for that TDP control. We'll have to use a third party plugin. And I'll tell you, that's one of the main reasons a lot of people just go over to Bazite on these other devices. It's because you will have to install plugins for certain things on different handhelds anyway. And Bazite usually comes with everything you need out of the box. But we're on official SteamOS 3.8, and I want to show you how this thing performs because it's pretty amazing. We'll start out here with, let's do Spider-Man 2. And with this game, I went down to a 25 watt TDP. We're at 1080 medium settings with FSR set to balance. No frame generation, and when it comes down to it with this game on basically any other iGPU out there, frame generation is something you really need at 1080 to get over 60. But since we've got a really powerful 30 CU iGPU here, we don't need it. You could use it if you want to and almost double the frame rate here, but it's looking like we're getting around 71 FPS on average with it set up like this. And if we threw a little more wattage at it, we could go up to high settings, get that same kind of performance we're seeing here. Around 35 watts would do, but I wanted to take it down to 25 just to see if it could handle it without frame gen. And this thing is doing an amazing job with Spider-Man 2 for sure. 
Next up, Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080, Steam Deck preset 25 watt TDP. Getting well over what the Steam Deck can put out, and of course we would. I mean, we've got a much more powerful APU here. Looking at around 74 FPS on average, just at that 25 watt TDP. But these Ryzen Max chips do love some more wattage. So with this set at 45 watts, we can now go up to the Ultra preset, and that takes FSR to quality. We're still at 1080, looking at around 71 FPS on average. So we're running this at Ultra on a handheld 1080. And like you saw, we can actually take this all the way up to 120 if we wanted to. And I think this chip would probably max out in the system at about 80 watts, you know, with the cooling system and everything like that. But up to 65 watts, even just in handheld mode, does work out. But personally, I kind of save, you know, that higher wattage for like a dock mode situation. So with that, we can actually take all of these games up to a 1440p resolution. But right now, we're limited by that 1080p display in the GPD Win 5. I mean, either way, we're seeing some outstanding performance out of this handheld. I also wanted to test out Elden Ring, and we're at 1080 high settings, 28 watt TDP. When I initially went into this game, I was at a 30 watt TDP, and it was super steady. I mean, it just locked at 60. At 28 watts, I did get a couple dips here and there, but if I didn't have that frame counter on, it's really something I wouldn't notice, especially with this variable refresh rate display. Witcher 3, I knew we'd see really good performance out of it. And when you run this on the Steam Deck, you go to that Steam Deck preset, which uses dynamic resolution. So it's going to really downscale that. And remember, on the Steam Deck, we've got an 800p display. We're at 1080 high with no FSR, no dynamic resolution at a 28 watt TDP, over 70 FPS on average. Doom the Dark Ages, high, FSR set to quality, 40 watt TDP, and recently we did get that uh, handheld update for this, but I didn't want to use it here because I knew, I mean, we'd see really great performance even at a lower wattage like that. I wanted to see if we could do this at high settings, and it does require a little bit of FSR at 1080, plus we're at a 40 watt TDP, but either way, I mean, we're over that 60 mark, seeing an average of around 62 FPS. Here's Borderlands 4, 1080 medium with FSR set to balance, and I did have to take this up to a 45 watt TDP, but I'll tell you that in Windows, this game does outperform what you're seeing here by about 13 FPS, so it's a pretty big jump there, and with it set up like this, I still got dips under 60. Not using frame gen, and that's something you could always use if you want to, but it really comes down to this game just not being very well optimized. And the final thing I wanted to take a look at was an easier to run game, just to check out kind of efficiency with these, uh, you know, indie games and TV games. I'm at a 6 watt TDP. This is running at 60 FPS. I've just uh, locked it down there. So going up to 120 is totally possible, but we have to take the wattage up. This will save as much as possible, and the game's running great just like it is. Total battery draw here with everything going on is around 10.5 watts, and that's going to give us close to 8 hours of runtime. But I do think more optimizations will be had with this. So we'll see a little less draw, especially at the 6 watt TDP. Uh, right now, I really believe a lot of it has to do with the massive cooling system they have. It's got two PC grade blower fans and they're not pushing much air right now, but they still draw some wattage. And I don't think it's totally necessary for both of them to be running at a 6 watt TDP. And again, it's still early for official Steam OS on the GPD Win 5, but I did a little bit of battery life testing here. We've got an 80 watt hour battery with this, and remember we've got the Ryzen Max 385 version. Screen brightness was set to 50%. When it comes to a mix of indie gaming and 2D gaming, we're going to see a little over 8 hours of runtime out of this thing. 25 watt TDP for AAA gaming. To draw on around 34 watts, so about 2 hours of runtime, and taking it up to that 45 watt TDP, we're going to see total battery draw somewhere around 63 watts in total. So a little over an hour of runtime out of the Win 5. And this is really comparable to what we saw in Windows on this already. Overall, pretty impressed here with the performance of the GPD Win 5 with official Steam OS installed. I will be doing some more testing here and there. I want to go with some lower TDPs, see exactly what we can do with this thing. And of course, I've got more handhelds that I want to test out. Uh, we haven't really been able to do HX370s with official Steam OS yet. I was able to get it up and running on one device, but that was it. 
Got a bunch of really powerful mini PCs with things like that Max Plus 395. So if there's any other device you want to see with SteamOS installed, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.